more time for Natalie, everybody. Clap it up for Natalie. Hey. This is, uh, this is gonna be the one. I'm filming it. You feeling good about it? Are you? Where do you think I should put the camera? Over there? Over here? This is like a side shot? Now, you're fucking it up already. A side shot? Should I do it right here? Yeah? No pressure. I mean, this is this could be the one. This could be the set. The set that changes everything, man. You feel it? Do you feel it? I don't like that attitude. There's a lot on the line, man. If this goes well, I might get a haircut. If it doesn't go well, I'm not getting a haircut. No pressure. I, um, I, I don't like this angle. This, this looks like there's nobody here. But, uh, whatever. It's very dark and moody. It looks like I'm doing comedy to poetry. Uh, reading. Uh, yeah, there, uh, I get whatever. Fuck it. It's not the one. Uh, should I do it over here? This is my whole set, I believe. This is what I do. I, I do this every night for the past 15 years. Where should I do it? There. So, so you don't see me. Oh, oh like a little bit of wait, wait, little wait. Beach. I can do that. You just sit down. This could be the one. But now you see my scoliosis does. You think they care about that? Scoliosis? That could be my thing, though, right? I could be the scoliosis comedian. Now there's a lot of pressure, right? I, uh, I don't, I don't smoke weed, which is surprising to some people, because that looks like all I do. It looks like one time I got so high and I time traveled. I know. I don't smoke weed, it gives me anxiety, okay? But I don't, I usually don't tell people that weed gives me anxiety until I'm having a panic attack under food time. That's usually when I start to be honest. Uh, this is a little story about the worst panic attack I ever had. I was trying to hook up with a coworker because it was a different time. <laughs> and by a different time, I mean two and a half years ago. <laughs> trying to hook up with this coworker, right? And we had the best stoner job of all time, even though I didn't smoke weed. I was hired to sell salsa makers. At, yeah, at, at Kmart stores in New Jersey. Trying to become a professional comedian is so hard, I thought I could pay my rent selling salsa makers at Kmart stores in New Jersey. And by the way, I didn't work for Kmart. I worked for a company that rented space inside the Kmart. It's like, you know you fucked up when even Kmart doesn't believe in what you're doing. Good job. Had to dress up like a chef. Yeah. Chef's hat, chef's apron and I had to sell this plastic bowl with a knife at the bottom, right? You put all your ingredients in to make salsa. Your, your tomatoes, your peppers, your cilantro, your hopes, your dreams, put them all in there, right? You put the lid on top, you crank the lid, and you're supposed to make salsa in 60 seconds or less. Right? How much would you pay for that? Nothing, nothing, nothing. You try to say a number for sympathy reasons, nothing. You're like, nothing. I was supposed to sell it for $29.99. $29.99. Yeah, most of my shifts ended with me eating chips and salsa by myself. <laughs> Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, just chips and salsa. The only good thing about the job is I worked with this woman named Grace, okay? She moved to New York to be a model, and she was so hot, so far out of my league, but we were both selling salsa. <laughs> and again, Different time. Different time. <laughs> There's no HR in the salsa man in the salsa man community. <laughs> uh, she was hot, right? And she was she was so far out of my lead. But here's the thing: if you have a job that sucks, and you're working with someone who's very attractive, and it's 2000 whatever, it's not it's not 2019. This is this is not appropriate now, maybe. But if you're working with someone who's attractive and your job sucks, ask them out because they don't realize they have options. <laughs> she was gorgeous. 
But we both went home smelling like onions, so why not? <laughs> and she was great. She was the best salesman at the company, okay? She, this, she was so good. Eventually, they let her sell the mops. <laughs> That's big. And I couldn't figure out why she was so good. Like, what did she have that I didn't have, okay? She was attractive, but also, she was just great. People trusted her, they believed in her, and I couldn't figure out why. And so our first day. And here was the plan. I was going to go to her apartment and smoke weed. That was the whole plan. <laughs> the whole plan. And like I said, I don't smoke weed, but she's the best salesman, so I'm like, I'm going to smoke some weed. I wanted to impress her, right? So my plan was to smoke as much weed as she smoked, and I fucked up. <laughs> it was like I was on a date with Snoop Dogg. It was bad. It was bad. I get to her apartment, as soon as I open the door, smoke hits me in the face, okay? She's smoking a joint. I sit on her futon, she takes two hits, I take two hits, and I'm the highest I've ever been in my entire life. I have been in her apartment for about five minutes. And I've never been higher before. But I kept smoking, you know why? Because everyone knows, when you get high and it's not going well, why not keep going? Keep smoking, baby. She takes two hits, I take two hits. My heart starts to race out of my chest. She takes two hits, I take two hits. I start shivering, <laughs> shaking. She takes two hits, I take two hits. I take out my phone and I text my father. <laughs> and I say, I'm not coming home for Christmas. <laughs> back in my pocket. She takes two hits, I take two hits, and I start to have a panic attack on her futon. My back, like, gives, like, I start to lose control of my body, I start to lay down on her futon, I'm shivering, I'm shaking, I'm freezing, and she kept smoking, okay? At one point, I think she was so high, she thought she was watching a movie of me having a panic attack. Like, this was on Netflix or something, right? But then something magical happened. I'm freaking out. I think I'm dying. All of a sudden, she gets up, she walks over to me, and she hugs me. She lays down next to me, and she hugs me, she holds me, and she says, Mike, I'm sorry this is happening to you, but everything's gonna be okay. I'm sorry this is happening to you, but you're gonna be fine. And all of a sudden, my heart rate slowed down, and my panic attack went away. And that's when I realized Grace was the greatest salesman of all time. <laughs> I trusted her, I believed in her, I bought seven salt smakers on her. <laughs> you know what? Could be the one. We might have did it. We might have did it. We might have did it. And you know the happy end of that story? Grace and I went on the second date because it was a different time and we had sex on the second date. <laughs> and neither of us worked there anymore. Neither of us sell salt smakers anymore. So it's a happy ending. Alright, thanks everybody. Have a good night. Thanks.